Live and direct. Right, right, right. It's Sway in the morning. Right here on Shade 45. Mike Epps, man. You, uh, How you doing, Sway? I'm doing well, man. Since the last time I saw you, man, I always... I, I see you doing different things out there in the yes, world, sir. man. I'm just really happy for you because thank you, man. I know you're a man who's been faced a lot of adversity in your life. Yes, sir. And then you went and you got this movie with these big stars like Forrest Whitaker and Anthony Mackie. I, I, I know, oh, man. Damn, <laughs> man. I might look. I might be able to get my mother that washer and dryer. That's been, right. Uh, You've been saving for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All this touring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Man, so, you know, I'm just, you know, Sway, I'm just really, really uh, happy and thankful that I'm able to still be relevant, man, after 20 years and still be in the business, yeah. man. You know, you mm-hmm. know how it is, man. People come and go all the time and... uh you know, just just the fact that I'm working, I'm just happy about that. Man, you know? that's a good place Everything to be in, man. Bullshit. You talking 20 years, you know... Um, you know, one of your one of our mutual friends just texted you. Yeah. That I've known at least twenty years, <laughs> Jeff Clanigan. Jeff Clanigan. Uh, I've actually known him longer than that. Wow. You know, I'm known. How, how, when did you first meet Jeff Clanigan? Um, I met Jeff about met probably about fifteen years ago. About mm-hmm. about about fifteen years ago, he did my first stand up, um, my first inappropriate behavior stand up special that I ever did mm-hmm. in San Jose. Yes. So, you know Jeff is doing big things right now. We we about to do a movie. My first Mike Epps movie called House Next Door. I never had my own movie, so this is my first time doing my own movie, mm-hmm. uh, without you know being a, a sidekick or anything like that. So it's been a long time coming, man. Big shout out to Jeff Clanigan out there, Cold Black, Cold you know what Black, I mean? handling that business, doing it big. Um, have you always yearned to have? I mean, on the sidekick thing is great because it mm-hmm. helped catapult you, especially working with Ice Cube and others. Right. Um, but that's always been your dream, just to not be the sidekick no more and be the main the main person. Well, you know what? I, <clears throat> even if even when you see me uh, as a sidekick, it was still my movie. Yeah. So it didn't even matter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whoever you see me standing next to, I was smoking that ass. You're just like that, right? And I don't say no names, but I smoked that ass. So you put me in a movie with you, I'm going to... I'm stealing it. I'm putting that pistol on you and taking the whole flip. Yeah, you, did. you know what I like about comedians in 2004? They like rappers. Yeah, yeah they man. You know, they would call you out. It's like uh, a verse. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yo, yo, no, it is. Like, it's like battle rap. <laughs> you meet <laughs> Mill. Yeah. You meet Mill right now. Oh, um, man, no. <laughs> when you see other comedians get this success, like I know mm. Jeff Klanikin will help Kevin Hart in the beginning. No doubt. Too. Um, and you see, Kev is just getting all the money. You it's know, clowning, and, yeah. And, and it's enough for everybody. It is. Uh, it, 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 how does that for you? You know, do you you can see like each comedian helps open a new door for another comedian. And right? see, that's the thing. I'm I'm proud of him because I helped him get all that. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for me, he wouldn't he wouldn't have had no action. I turned down So Plain, mm-hmm. which was his first movie. Yep. I turned down Fool's Gold, which was his second movie. Mm-hmm. I turned down a, a, having a BET show, which was his show now. Mm-hmm. Hollywood. So you, yes. Uh, yeah. No, it wasn't that show, but yeah. I could have been on BET doing a show. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, everybody's path is different. You know, um, I'm 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 more of a, a, a artist. I'm not a celebrity. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Not dissing or nothing, but I'm not a celebrity. I intend to be in the business like Morgan Freeman. Yeah. And sometimes you have to st- uh, uh, take a step back and play chess instead of checkers and play the game. You know, right now I'm standing next to uh, Academy Award winning Forrest Whitaker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I could have kept playing Day Day but, and got a bunch of money, but, you know, you wouldn't see me in another 10 years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I just did a movie with uh, Zoe Zaldada that's coming out called uh, – uh, the uh, Nina Simone story uh, with uh, mm-hmm. with 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 uh, uh, I played a little small part of Richard Pryor in the movie. I'm mm-hmm. um, going Monday. I'm going to shoot a movie with Vince Vaughn called Term Life. I'm playing a crooked cop. Yeah, bending that pistol across somebody's head on screen. Okay, that's good. That's always fun. Mm-hmm. I'm doing a documentary on my life called Whoever Who Would Have Ever Thought, where I went back to my hometown and I shot. I got pictures of me and. Footage of me uh, when I was a kid, the mm-hmm. first time I got on stage when I was 14, where my life um, went down another road. I went back to the prison I was in, which was the same one Mike Tyson was in. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Indiana Youth Center in Indianapolis. Uh, I got all my how, friends. How did you get put in prison? Through, what did you do? Selling cocaine. Okay. 
All right. Good cocaine dealer. You yeah. know what I mean? No. Well, do you make him big Always money? People, or, no, uh, not, I made it. I, you know, I got... I used to get quarter keys. I was getting nine ounces at a time. Oh, you know okay, what I mean? okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah small For all lady. my hustlers out there, you know. <laughs> but I was only 16, 17 years old, you know what I mean? And um, But, uh, 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 you know, I've been through a, a lot of trials and tribulations in my life. And I actually started off as a crook. I got four felonies, you know. I didn't wait till I get rich like some of you rappers out there oh and then God. decide you wanted to make people think you was gangster. Mm-hmm. I started off as a kid and changed my life. That's the way you're supposed to do it. You ain't can't go backwards yeah. and wait till you get rich where you got bond and lawyer money and start making people think you a gangster. Mm-hmm. It's easy to get caught with a gun that you ain't never shot or yeah. Get caught with some dope you never got a chance to sell. So mm-hmm. I tell all the kids out there, if you didn't do it as a kid, don't try it as an adult. Yeah. Because it's bad for your health. Yeah. You know and what I mean? It's bad for you. It's just dumb. Uh, man, acting alongside Forrest Whitaker, what is, you know, do you learn as you act with folks? Exactly, Sway. You know, it's it's really, really educational working, working with people like Forrest Whitaker. I mean, when I first seen him, I was like, man, I... I you know, I'm like, damn, I, I had to touch myself and say, damn, man, I'm really working next to Forrest Whitaker. Like, mm-hmm. damn, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, but uh, it's really educational working with a dude like that, man, because uh, you learn so much. You you have to step your game up. You can't just, you know, this ain't no comedy movie. It's, mm-hmm. it's This is something that you have to really concentrate. I normally don't know my lines in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what do you do? <laughs> like, you be clowning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but, ha- but working with a dude like this, you got to know your lines. You know your lines, it's, yeah. So, because because he'll just look at you crazy, and Ford's got that look that anyway. Yeah, the eye. Eye. <laughs> Let me see the eye. How you do that? Wait, look at the camera. Show wow. Him, show him the eye. <laughs> Damn, that's Oscar nominated. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> made his eye do the Ford Whitaker. You're not supposed to make your eye do that. That was crazy. Um, but he but he is he is definitely a serious. And he's great in this movie. This movie, Repentance, is a, is about um, Anthony Mackie is playing is my brother. I'm playing Anthony Mackie's brother, and he's a motivational speaker. He writes. Uh, he's an author for motivational books, and he wrote a book. And um, me and Anthony Mackie was out drunk one night, and we hit a lady. And I we you know I was trying to protect my brother's reputation because I was a brother that was fresh out of jail. I took the woman. And threw over the bridge or whatever, blah blah blah, and um, I was trying to protect. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was trying to protect his reputation, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I mean, if he, we would have got caught with him drinking and all that, it would have been the end of his career. And um, Forrest Whitaker went to talk to him about the book. I can't tell y'all the damn okay, story. Go see the movie tomorrow. Okay, okay, the movie comes out tomorrow. Damn, they right? about to bootleg our conversation, oh, okay, all right, man. <laughs> Yo. You, I'm glad you're doing a story about your. Uh, uh, um, you gonna do a movie about your life? Yeah, I'm doing. It's it's a it's a it's a feel good documentary, uh, Sway. Because yeah. you know, um, I just I just want to show the kids that guess what? No matter what part of the country you live in, no matter what you've been through, I'm I'm a welfare baby. Mm-hmm. I you know I know don't nobody want to hear the sob story, but I'm a welfare nah, baby. Talk, talking, I'm a welfare baby too. That's right. Food stamps, it. WIC, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 social workers and all. I watch my mama run social workers up out the house and tell them to stay out of business because you know they the social workers back in the seventies and the eighties. If, mm. if it was a man sitting up in the house and they came over there, they try to cut your food stamps off. My mother had to tell them that's my brother sitting on, you know. <laughs> Hey, can I speak? You, that's how they kept the 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 fam the black family divided because wow. in the seventies and eighties, if you had a man sitting in the house, right, they took you off of public assistance. That's crazy, right? Ain't that crazy? So you can never have a man in the household. <laughs> in the house, oh, wow. yeah. That's that cool. was crazy. Man, I never thought of it that way. Wow. Yeah, so you had a lot of broken up families because the women were like, hey, you're going to have to yeah. get up out of here. And the social workers <laughs> used to just drop by like a P.O.? Man. And they would just check. <laughs> you you like, had no idea. When and, they was coming. And they used to knock on the door. Like, you hear the knock. Mike, tell me if y'all used to do this. You hear the knock. And your mother had to say, oh, shit, it's a social worker. Yeah. Coming! And then you gather all the stuff you have in the house, yeah. like leather jackets, yeah. anything, the sneakers. Shit. You had to hide it. <laughs> and they went around the house. They would check the closets. 
You had to hide it. You had to hide it. Because if they seen you living too good, they was cutting you off your assistance. (laughs) So so a a brother grew up with that. A lot of the kids out there growing up, you know, some of the kids didn't eat. You know, because they try to tell me, you know, well, why you didn't graduate from high school? Well, first of all, you know, I was trying to get something to eat. (laughs) So I couldn't concentrate in the the classroom because I was trying to figure out how – I was the first one in lunch. Yeah. I was on free lunch. I had that little front free lunch ticket. You know what I mean? It's kind of hard to tell a kid not to do wrong, not to steal and all that when he ain't got nothing. Mm. You know, so I went through that, and I got on a Greyhound bus and left my hometown. I started getting in trouble. I started trying to sell a little dope, uh, and I got in trouble. I wasn't a great drug dealer. Mm-hmm. I would get busted all the time because I was really, really too nice. I was a nice guy out there dealing with wolves. So I got busted all the time, set up by, you know, informants and this and that. So I got in a little trouble. And when I got out, that last time I got on a Greyhound bus, and I rode a Greyhound bus to New York, man. I lived in New York. I slept on couches. I did all of that, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, mm-hmm. to get to where I was. Russell Simmons put me on Def Comedy Jam. I did Def Comedy Jam for some years, got on tour, started making a little money, lived in every borough in New York. Yeah. You know, when you're poor, you're going to live everywhere. You're going to pay $1,500 for a, a half of a bedroom and three mice. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> and I, 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 I went from that. I got on another Greyhound bus and went all the way out to California. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My little buddy, uh, Baby Loney, rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my little partner out there in L.A., was my little manager at the time. I had a, a ferocious gangbanger as my manager <laughs> at the time that, that got killed. Rest in peace to my man, Baby Loney. He was with me when I met Ice Cube one night. He seen me perform. Had me audition for, for next Friday. I, I went to bury my buddy, Baby Loney, and went straight to the audition, got the movie role, and was standing there right there after Chris Tucker had ripped the movie. After he ripped the movie, everybody was looking at me like, you better be funny. Mm -hmm. I called my mama on the phone, told my mama, I'm going to buy you a house. She said, man, I ain't moving out of these projects. (laughs) It ain't no certain that you're going to make it in this business. I said, okay, let me buy you a wash and dryer first. (laughs) (laughs) She said, if you stay in the business long enough, I'll let you buy me a house because this might be just a lottery. You might just hit a little something. So, you know, I've been doing movies. I sat with Richard Pryor for a year. I was with Bernie Mac before he died. I was with Whitney Houston before she died. I did both movies with all three of them before they passed away. Mm. Now, the ending of my story is that me and my daughter, I have a daughter that's 21 years old that I love dearly. I had to leave when I was young, so I didn't really get a chance to spend time with her. You know what I mean? So she felt like that I abandoned her, but I had to tell her I couldn't be in two places at one time. If I had to stay there with you, I'd have got killed or been in the penitentiary for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. So I kind of lost contact with her. The end of the story is that I have to get revive my relationship with my daughter, yeah. and I'm going back to Indiana and get a, a, a an expungement of my four felonies. Mm-hmm. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna make the state of Indiana drop all them felonies that they gave me when I was a teen because now I'm a I'm I'm a married man I got kids mm-hmm. I don't get in trouble I give back to the community you know and I do the right thing. You, you know your daughter I remember you came up here last time we was talking about that's the same one y'all went through the right the in uh, what you call it, Twitter TMZ. the Twitter the end of TMZ right. How, y'all your relationship since y'all kind of has gotten better. Uh, not really. You know what I mean? But yeah. but but it, it goes that way sometimes. You know, mm-hmm. for a minute I didn't like my daddy. Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean? Now now that I'm a granddaddy, my daughter got a kid. Mm-hmm. Now she might get a chance to see how it is to have a relationship with a child. You mm-hmm. know, a lot of kids don't understand what it is to be a parent until they have kids. Yeah. And after you have kids and you have a relationship with your kids, then your kids or being away with you, then you get a chance to understand, okay, this is what my daddy was going through mm-hmm. with me. And, you know, that's how it go. But I still love my daughter dearly. Yeah. You know, the baby mamas, uh, you know, that's <laughs> nothing. <laughs> so how many you got? How many baby mamas? Yeah. I got so many kids, Sway, I just ride through the hood and wave now. <laughs> like a parade. Mike Epps. Real quick, Mike, you know, a lot of comedians – in this in digital age, have been making, well, you know, people have been doing a lot of things on the internet or uh, through social media that's cre- created the celebrity forum. 
I was telling you off air, man, the th- difference between you and a lot of folks is that you're I, you're naturally funny. I've seen yeah. you do stand up, my man, and I swear, right on, it wasn't nothing written. You know, no. it just felt like you might have had some couple points you wanted to hit, and right. I just watched you improv a show that was funny through <laughs> the beginning to the end in amazement, though. Thank you, man. You know, um, how do you feel? Uh, it's a lot of people making a name for themselves on the internet, mm-hmm. <clears throat> which I don't knock. But no, I don't this, either. You know. Oh, it's just, it's just, it's just the way of the world now. You know, it's the a lot of social network stuff because sometimes you know, um, you can you can have more you can have more marketing can override talent nowadays. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. You know what I mean? Message. Um, marketing overrides talent. And nowadays the kids are, you know, the, these kids are, these kids ain't as smart as we used to be. They, they, they like fast food. They don't like, they don't like to sit down and get a good meal. So you can feed them fast food mm. and make a ton of money and trick them, you know, and, and that's the thing about it is, you know, I'm, I'm really happy for all the young brothers that's making waves for, for all of us black men out there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Big shout out to Kevin Hart. He's, killing the game right now um you know the way hollywood is set up is that if if one brother do good we all do good mm-hmm. uh, they look at us all the same mm. you know what i mean if if one of us if one of our movies don't do good guess what all of y'all did bad <laughs> yeah. you walk in a room you mm-hmm. be like they damn near want to say hey i see your cousin's movies is making no <laughs> money this weekend yeah. we won't be doing your movie yeah, just like that just like that you ain't got nothing to do with this other brother that that did the movie you know yeah and and and, and the bottom line is is you can you can be okay and and a little funny and be in movies that make a lot of money and they considered you the biggest star in the world you can be funny and be in movies that don't make money like myself. Mm-hmm. I've been in a lot of movies that didn't make a lot of money. And, um, you know, they just don't look at me like I'm a successful star like that. Mm-hmm. But the people, I'm the people's champ, you know. The people's champ. The, pe- the people I picked like me that. for no 20 doubt. years. Mike Epps, ladies and gentlemen. Teresa, what's up? How you doing? Hi, how are you? Doing all right. Hi, Sway. Hi, what's up, hey? Hey, 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 Teresa, what up, girl? Teresa. <laughs> Tracy. Yo. Tracy. Yeah, I said Tracy. 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 Oh, Tracy. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Tracy. It's something like that. It's Tracy. Huh? Well, say it again. Tracy from Tracy. Georgia. Just Tracy. Oh, Tracy. Oh, 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 our Prissy. girl. Yeah, Citizen Prissy. 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 Okay. Prissy. Say what's up to Mike Epps. Hey, Mike Epps. You one of the funny ass cats I know. A funny ass cat. <laughs> 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 what are you doing there, Prissy? What you sipping on? I know you got an Arnold Palmer in your hand. <laughs> no, I got some exclusive. Whoa, what's oh, what's that? That's vodka. Damn. All right, what the heck? Already? <laughs> Phoenix is in Kansas City. Damn. Said already, man. Don't judge us, Sway. I'm not. Phoenix, good morning. How you doing? Good morning, Sway. Good morning, Mike. Hello, everybody. Hey, hey. Up, Phoenix? Um, Mike, I just want to tell you that you're my favorite comedian ever. Uh, and, um, just last year, when you tried to, when you came to Kansas City on, uh, 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 I'm sorry, April the seventh, I tried to come see you, and I almost died. Like I completely totaled my car on the highway. I broke my damn. shoulder. I had to quit my job and everything. Like trying to come see you. Oh, I was waiting on my soul to come out. Like it was crazy. Yeah, how are you supposed but, to react woo, to that? I almost. Died. I know. It's you know, like, I damn. Did I do it? A final destination. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You know what? I'm I'm so glad God blessed you. You didn't you didn't you didn't leave us and yes. And thank you so much for, for trying to support me. And I'm gonna be coming back to Kansas City. I want to make sure that I get you some tickets. I'm Please a, I'm, do. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm gonna get. I'm, I'm gonna take your number. Yeah, hold on okay. the line. Hold but on. I want to see them damn uh, doctor records too, just in case. <laughs> you I, I got pictures on my car. Yeah, and everything. yeah. Let's see this shit. All right. Yeah. <laughs> hold, hold, hold on the line. Hold on the line. We got oh, Celebrity Wire right now with Tracy G. Sway in the morning. Say Reporting on arrests. Have you figured out why I'm in these handcuffs? Fights. You're a fucking dickhead. And celebrity meltdowns. No. 
If you can't, if you can't help them, help me. It's the Celebrity Wire on Sway in the Morning. All right, 40 minutes into the hour. Tracy G, what you got? Mike Epps is joining us. Yeah, so yesterday we spoke about the big story of the week, which has to do with Paula Patton and Robin Figg. We know they got separated, and we were talking about why. And Us Weekly says it has everything to do with back when Miley Cyrus was a twerkaholic, and she brought Robin on stage for her freak fest at the mm-hmm. VMAs. Mm-hmm. Well, Paula Patton, who initially claimed that she was in full support of it, actually was not. And TMZ has some sources connected to the to the couple that say Paula, she felt utterly disrespected. Mm. And what really pissed her off is she found out that the Miley Cyrus, you know, the raunchy part of the performance was impromptu and that uh, Robin went along with it. And now, to make matters even worse, we all saw, and this is the part where people said they weren't surprised about their separation, the photos they came out with Robin grabbing on another woman's ass and went viral also just went made her go crazy. And then um, he, since then, has been in clubs, has so much women on him, so she just feels like she had to let him go. Mm, I think, man, I, I I know both of them, and man, it's, it's, a, it's a tragic thing, you know, it's just it's it's hard for men out there, especially when you you famous and stuff like that. Women yeah. kind of throw themselves at you. It's it's really really tough. You know, maybe they'll work it out. Maybe they'll come together. And... Sway, no, right? It's hard for yeah, you too, Sway. Right. Sway. Yeah, <laughs> right, man. Temptation. Hey, you know, I just be walking from Sirius XM to Shade Four or Five. They be trying to sit on my face. <laughs> 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 it's hard for him too, Mike. <laughs> In the world. You, yeah, y'all can relate to yeah, that. Yeah, get your worst <laughs> listeners, Sway. Wipe them off. Hey, you, let me walk from Shade Boy 5 to... to uh, you want to walk with me? Yeah, let me walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, both of y'all can look like some glazed donuts. Ew. <laughs> the news of Beyonce. <laughs> she rarely has any scandals attached to her, but if you remember four years ago, her uh, father actually helped her out with some scandals because it came out in the news that he had a love child and he was cheating on Tina Knowles. So what happened, she ended up filing a divorce and then Beyonce ended up firing him as a manager. And now, come to find out, the woman he was cheating on Tina with, Alexandra Wright, is speaking out doing her own interview she sat down with inside edition and she revealed that she is now on welfare and she's begging matthew to be a part of this uh son's life she's asking for money but hear her speak on it more i've gone every step to take accountability for my child and raise my child and i expect matthew to do the same i don't i don't expect beyonce to take accountability it's not her problem you know it's not her it's not her situation this is Matthew's situation solely, and I think that he should stand up and take responsibility. So I've turned this, the case over to the state, and it's in the best hands it can be. And I fought the good fight for my son. Heather has a really interesting yeah. perspective on this, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Heather. Whore. Yeah. She's a whore. She and, and I'm going to tell you that's why. That's what that bitch get. <laughs> that, it, oh. For thinking that, the, the, but see, that's what happens is that women think that they automatically going to get cut in on something that they didn't work for you know what i mean if if okay if you had a child by somebody and you think you're gonna make some money off of having the child and it don't go your way guess what that's what the fuck you get <laughs> you know what i mean because at the end of the day the most important thing is that the child has a relationship with the father mm-hmm. and if you're making some money and the kid ain't got no relationship with the daddy you really lost. Mm-hmm. You you fucked the kid up mm. more than anything. Yeah. My caps, ladies and gentlemen. Money That's can't a- buy that. You're, you're listening to Sway in the morning on Shea 45.